Cedar Point, the roller coaster capital of the world. With a name like that, you can assume they have very good rides, and they do. So today, I will be ranking all of Cedar Point's roller coasters. By the way, this is my home park, and I've already gone to Cedar Point six times this year and ridden every coaster. So, I know my stuff. Number 16. Oh yeah, there's like 16.8 roller coasters at Cedar Point, because like, one's not a roller coaster, and the other one is a roller coaster, but not really, but will be next year anyways. Number 16, Wilderness Run. This was Intamin's first coaster, and they got off with a BANGER. Not really. This ride has one hill. I've said enough. Number 15, Woodstock Express. Before I was a roller coaster enthusiast, I would ride this over and over with my dad. Very, very good coaster for kids. I will ride again. Number 14, Corkscrew. This ride sucks. Number 13, Mine Ride. This is the only good coaster for working your way up. Only thing is that it's pretty rough and painful. To be fair though, this is the only mine train I've ridden, so the others may be like this. Number 12, Wild Mouse. Cedar Point started 2022 with a new ride. This is a Wild Mouse coaster created by Zamperla. I thought this would be down there with Woodstock Express and Wilderness Run, but no. This is actually pretty good, and it feels like you're gonna fly off the track in the hairpin turns. Number 11, Iron Dragon. For a kid's coaster, underrated. For a thrill ride, garbage. The second half is pretty fun though, and I thought I was gonna fly off the track. Alright, now we're in the top 10. Number 10, I got Blue Streak. Insane airtime, but I think I'm gonna die every time. Also has very strong laterals, which is fun if you're sitting with a friend on your right. Number 9, Rigru. This ride is so overrated that it's underrated. The first half is a tad rattly, but the second half is where you would hit your head. By the way, from what I've experienced, if you sit on an end seat, you won't hit your head as much. I want to place this higher, but the coasters above it are just better. Alright, number 8, we got Gemini. I tried making a straight face and I only could when we were turning. The first drops is one of the best in the park. Also, this is very smooth for being 45 years old. And number 7, I got Raptor. This is underrated. This is one of the most intense rides at the park. If you sit in the back, well actually, just don't sit in the back. It's for your own safety. Number 6, Magnum XL200. Every time I get off, I don't want to come back on. I'm into smooth, sustained ejector. But it may be just because I'm 5'7 and the lap bar always gets me stapled. I would marathon this for a video though. Also has one of the best and underrated first drops. Our fifth place is Gatekeeper. I rode this on opening day and it was hauling. Front right gives great hang time on the first drop. And the back left is the best first drop on this ride. Back right is just insane. At the time of writing this, I rode all of these yesterday. Also has pretty good airtime. And number four, I got Val Raven. I may sound like a GP for this, but this ride is very good. If this were at any other park, it would be the best. My favorite part is the zero G roll thing. It gives great hang time. I've ridden this six times and five of them I've been in the front row. It is make or break where you sit though. First time I rolled this, I sat in the middle row and I had this between Gemini and Raptor. I've never written the back row though. And number three, I got Millennium Force. This was underwhelming for me. There's a lot of rattling, but to be honest, I don't care about that. The first drop and overbank is the best part. Well, I should clarify, the entire ride is overbanks. I'm talking about the overbank right after the first drop. The only reason it's here in third place is because of the speed, height, and the drop. Although, I would never skip this ride when I'm at Cedar Point. Number 2. Now, this will give me a lot of dislikes, but let me explain. Number 2 is Steel Vengeance, and don't get me wrong, this ride is amazing. 
but if only it were more intense. Like, just add 10 feet onto the first drop and it would be great. Well, it is great. It'd just be better than great. I love intense rides. I've never been on I-305, but if I did, it would be my number one. Speaking of number one, I got Maverick. Now, let me explain. I love launches and I love intensity. This has both of them. This has the best drop, giving a huge stomach drop and giving ejector at the same time. Then you go into the first turn and it's fairly intense. But by the time you have processed all that, you switch directions so fast that you get airtime. And we have to talk about the airtime hill. This thing slaps. Then the worst part of the ride is the two horseshoe rolls. But then you slow down and have an amazing launch. And then we got an S-band, a wave turn, I think, which is very unexpected if you're not in the front row. Then a stango dive, which is so intense that you go upside down, although it is not considered an inversion. Then the last airtime hill, you are flying out of your seat. The only thing I think could be better is the height, which is why I think Intimidator 305 will be my number one. Anyways, that's the end. Are you with me in the comments, and I'll see you next time.